Ruby. Ah. You want to see it? How's it going? So today I'm just working on planting a few things out in the garden and then a couple other projects. So I just planted these firelight hydrangeas here in our brick uh, kind of raised bed area. Uh, this last year we had King Tuts and Play in the Blue Salvia, Diamond Mountain Euphorbia, and Lemon Coral in there. Um, and it was so beautiful, but it always makes me so sad when we have to tear all of it out because they're all annuals. Um, and I really wanted to have some structure still left in here. Um, so I got my hands on three really beautiful hydrangeas. I mean, they're kind of in their fall color right now, but the blooms are still absolutely beautiful. And I just thought it would be a fun new look for this area to start putting in some more permanent things. Um, and I think that these will be perfect. Let me show you uh, a little bit up close what they look like. So there are three of them right here. The blooms are beautiful. Look at that. They're a little bit lighter colored, like a little bit more on the pinkish purple side than the ones I've got planted in the ground, uh, which turned a little bit more pinkish red. Um, but I'm guessing that they probably act a little bit different when they're in their plant cans as opposed to planted in the landscape all season long. And their fall color is gorgeous. Look at this. So we've got a mixture of yellows. There's some maroon, some orange, red. It's just a beautiful plant. Now these will grow six to eight feet tall and wide. I will prune them pretty hard every like late spring. So I'm thinking we'll keep them on the smaller side of things, but still I think it's gonna be a really big showy centerpiece plant. So there are a couple things that I really like about the firelight other than the fact that their blooms are beautiful. I mean, they start like a, a white, like creamy white color. And then as the season goes, they quickly change to a pink and then they deepen to kind of this red fall color bloom absolutely gorgeous but the other two things that i like about them is that um they start blooming earlier on in the season than a lot of other hydrangeas in fact proven winners came up with a chart that um like records bloom time and size for all the paniculated type hydrangeas that they have which this is a part of that group of hydrangeas um so these start blooming very early in the season um, as opposed to like your limelights which i love my limelight hydrangeas but they start blooming a lot later um so it's nice to just to get like an extra month or so out of these plants. And there's just something about hydrangeas. Every year in about August when everything else is just looking weary and tired from the heat, you know, they might have flushed back, perennials might have flushed back a second bloom, but it's never as glorious as the first. But there are my hydrangeas, like looking absolutely gorgeous and just in full bloom. And it's just that, like that's when they shine. And that time of year, I always think I need to add more hydrangeas. So I've got them kind of tucked away in every area of my garden so I have that gorgeous um, late summer interest when everything else is so tired and the other thing is that they are a zone three through eight so incredibly winter hardy I garden in a zone five and I know we're getting toward the end of October so it might seem a little bit weird that I'm planting these things out um, but anything is better off in the ground as opposed to being in plant cans so if you have anything sitting there and you're kind of wondering should I plant it is it safe definitely better to get it in the ground than to leave it in its can but the fact that these are a zone three and I garden in a zone five means that I'm not going to be worrying about these one bit because they are so tough. And honestly, any type of paniculata hydrangea or panicle hydrangea, they have the panicle shaped blooms, so more pointy. Um, they bloom on new wood, which means that they're pretty bulletproof. Like you really 
I mean, you'd have to try incredibly hard to do something wrong with this type of hydrangea. Um, typically, I'll come in and prune them back by about a third of their total height in the late spring when I see their buds start to swell and turn green, because that way I can distinguish which branches might be dead, um, and then I can kind of like gauge exactly where I need to cut things, um, and that seems to be the best time, and it keeps them really strong. It helps them develop that really nice, strong, woody base. So I did follow up with a light layer of mulch both to help kind of keep moisture in around the hydrangeas it helps suppress weeds and it does make it look better because I had drip tubing kind of popping through the mulch in a bunch of places and this is kind of a weird bed anyway uh, when we moved in it was all like there was no water to it it was all kind of rocks and drought tolerant plants but nothing really looked that good it was a tired tired space um, so I left that upper layer and left those rocks there to kind of hold it up but honestly when we have our other plants planted in here you can't see that ever um, so it'll quickly fill in and I'm trying to decide what to plant alongside these hydrangeas for next year so I'd love to know what you would do so this year we had the blue salvia in there so I'll probably take it a different direction than blue and purple but I don't know you never know I've got a couple months to think about it I did run irrigation to these so I took out um, some of the drip tube that was in the center because it would have been too much and then I ran two individual uh, drip tubes to each hydrangea so I can control how much water they have. And I think that this spot gets the perfect amount of light because we've got the pine trees you can see back there that create a tiny bit of shade in the morning and then it gets a really strong block of after like mid morning sun to late afternoon sun. And then right behind me here is our um, Chinese rain tree and that protects everything in this bed from the blazing afternoon sun but it gets like a good eight hour block so i think that these hydrangeas are going to be incredibly happy i'm hoping Ooh, i like it from this angle that looks really pretty it looks always a little bit different from every single angle when you do a trio of plants okay so now I need to move on to my next task, which is to um, fortify the chicken coop. So I need to add the hardware cloth. I meant to do it the other day and things just got away from us and we got too busy. Um, and I haven't noticed the skunk back though, you guys. I've been using, I put a repellent around it, which I'll show you when we get to the barn. Um, I have a repelzol is what it's called. And I put a, a like a big strip of it around the whole run and I haven't seen the skunk back. And maybe uh, it's the repelzol or the fact that I had a trap out here. I I don't know the trap didn't seem to bother it the other night so anyway I think that that repellent is working so I'll show you that and then we're gonna work on ex excavating this area and getting some hardware cloth down so that I just don't have to think about it I did see quite a number of questions about whether or not I put my chickens in the coop at night and I do I shot them in the coop so it's not like they were ever in real like scary danger um just because they were locked in there but i just don't know like maybe some animals will get brave and come here during the day i don't know how they act you know if they get desperate so anyway i just want to fix it so i don't have to worry about it anymore you can see i've already been doing a little bit of leaf blowing here's my blower i got all the leaves well not all of them i just did a general like clean up right here and I blew some out of this flower bed, but right now we have this nice, lovely extension cord running through here to run our camera, which we have run the past several nights and I haven't seen anything else try to bother this area. So I'll put the trap away and then we're gonna start digging this up. So this is the repellent right here, the repels all, and there is a skunk on the label right there. It says it lasts up to two months, but I'm probably gonna apply it uh, a little bit more often than that, especially right now when I know it's been a problem. I want to keep the aversion strong. But it says to sprinkle a band six to eight inches wide next to and around the area you wish to protect, which I did do that. So this is labeled for deer, rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks, raccoons, porcupines, birds, rats, beavers, groundhogs, skunks, and shrews. So in case any of you guys are dealing with any of those things,
All right, so I put two layers of hardware cloth down. I kind of had the perfect size roll. I actually had this in the barn. I found it and I think it's like two and a half feet, which is about perfect because the beams, the four by fours right here, the concrete comes out quite far on either side. So the width of this hardware cloth fit the area like a glove, which is amazing. I didn't have to do as much cutting. So I set one piece down that comes all the way back to here. It kind of goes down maybe like six inches or so-ish. And then it comes out horizontally. So if anything tries to dig under, it's gonna hit that hardware cloth. Rather than going just straight down and only having that, I just figured, plus this ground is so hard. I figured the um, hardware cloth coming all the way out would be just as much of a deterrent. And then I put soil on top of it, and then I put another piece down on top of that soil just for double. I don't know, probably unnecessary, but feels good to do it. Um, so now that I've got this area kind of dug out, I need to go get more gravel. And I'm just gonna steal it from this area in front of our barn because it's pretty deep right here. It's actually kind of hard to walk around. So I'm gonna go grab a bucket and start shoveling. I dare that skunk to get past that paver and the hardware cloth. I think that'll do the trick. So I remembered I had that one large paver. I went and bought two of them last year to use by my vegetable garden where we put the arbors. Um, and then when we had the brick path laid, we picked up the paver because we didn't need it anymore. And I had it out back behind the barn. <coughs> I just swallowed a bug. <coughs> oh. oh. And so this actually fit perfectly. I can't even believe it. It doesn't match the other paper. I am so directionally challenged. It doesn't match the other pavers that are right there, but it doesn't even matter because it's gonna keep the skunk out. I mean, between that, it's a heavy rock. Between that and the hardware cloth, I don't think that skunk stands a chance. And I'm also gonna do uh, the uh, repellent one more time. So now what I'm gonna do is just clean this whole area up and maybe go get one more bucket of gravel to kind of clean it up after I get the leaves up. And then I might do a little bit of planting in the pots right here by the coop. Before I clean up all the leaves and all the other junk, I'm gonna show you where we put the extra dirt that we end up with in projects. I do have some pavers I need to put behind the barn first. So I'm out here in front of our house along our lane, and this is where we put anything just like soil. No garden debris, no anything like root balls, anything like that just extra dirt that we happen to have. Right along here, which is just dirt and weeds usually anyway. And my hope is that one day we've brought out enough soil to where it all looks more like it does right in here. It's a lot more level and a lot more smooth and I would love to seed this whole side of this lane like with zinnias or wildflowers or something like that. I think that would be really beautiful. Um, so we'll just keep on filling it up a little bit of soil at a time.
There's Cheddar, checking out the work we've done over here today. It looks so much better, this whole area does. I mean, it's a little bit sad because, you know, all the annuals are gone. I do think the last thing I'm gonna do is address the window box right there, just because the Creeping Jenny is almost, like it's getting close to the ground and it's gonna start to look pretty tattered pretty soon. But this whole spot is amazing. I'm feeling so good about it. I don't do like a super good cleanup of all the leaves because we still have a lot of leaves on trees. Um, so I just did kind of a once over and that did a pretty good job. I did want to talk about this right here. This is um, a leaf tarp that DeWitt sent out to us and it's amazing. So it's basically a flat tarp with four handles and one handle in each corner and you just gather them up after you rake your leaves onto the tarp or blow them onto the tarp. Um, so that's been really handy. I'm pretty confident in my fix today, but I don't want to be too confident because that's when things go awry. So I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on this area. I'll be keeping up with the repellent and hopefully the chickens will not have any worries and I won't have any worries in the night. Okay, so I'm going to go grab a few flowers in the greenhouse and we will tackle this window box and then I need to do some watering. I kind of forgot I need to water everything today. I'm thinking just a few of these tapestry mixed pansies will be really pretty and maybe a couple of small carrots. Looks like I have three of these left. We'll see if that'll work. Oh, that looks so much better. The Creeping Jenny, it was looking a little bit sad and stringy and it looked good in the first little bit. Like I liked it when it was short and you could still kind of see the basket and see some definition. And I did like the fact that it was super low maintenance. Like I never had to worry about spraying it for budworms or anything like that. Um, but I missed having color and I don't know that I will actually do that combination again. We'll see. Uh, and then I was not planning on planting up the containers on either side of the chicken coop, but I'm in the mood. So I just think I'm going to do it. Well, those turned out pretty cute. I had to kind of cobble together what I had left in the greenhouse, but it looks good to just have something going in them instead of having them be kind of empty and just kind of barren looking. Um, so I've got some Osaka white cabbage, which those are gorgeous. And then I used some Snow Princess Alyssum because they're so cold tolerant and I happen to have some that I, I think I've had in there since this spring or early, early summer. Uh, and then some more of the tapestry mix pansies. I actually thought about not putting any pansies and just keeping it white and green, but it looked too, like there wasn't enough color next to the white coop. Let me go over to the other one. I just felt like it needed a little something just because there's not much going on around here. I'm gonna be working on adding some more um, winter and fall interest in this area this next year. Many of you guys know that this chicken coop area is brand new this year. Uh, the building part was a potting shed with a root cellar attached to it and we had that removed because it wasn't a functioning root cellar it had a big bunch of cracks in the ceiling that were leaking water and it was just a creepy just bleh. this is a much better use for this space i think so we had the run built on and then i just made this flower bed in front this spring um so i'm excited to really tackle it a little bit further next year i did put some permanent things in here like uh, zephyrine drew and roses i planted four of those in their pink climbing rose that's nearly thornless. And then I did put in a weeping blue spruce and some salvia, some peach colored roses. Um, but most of the color and interest in this bed was annual this year. And I do that in a lot of new areas of my garden where I've got big blank spaces where I don't know what I want to put. I'll just pop annuals in for that season so I can think about it and have time. And then I slowly build on that. But it does make for a pretty sad 
look once you pull all those annuals out. And I just realized how dirty my hands are, which means my face is probably dirty. That's why I always paint my fingernails a dark color. So that does it for this video today. I need to clean up all of my mess and I need to go get things watered um, and then I need to start dinner. So I think it was a pretty productive uh, group of projects out here today. It feels good just to kind of get some new things planted and some other things buttoned up. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.